scary stories to keep you up at night. The Forgotten Village, in the heart of a dense forest, hidden from the prying eyes of civilization, lay the remnants of a village long forgotten by the world. Its existence was but a whisper among the neighboring towns, often dismissed as folklore to scare children. But there was truth in the tales, a dark secret that the forest jealously guarded. Our story begins with Alex, an avid explorer with a penchant for uncovering lost places, drawn by the allure of the unknown. Alex set out to find this phantom village, armed only with a tattered map and tales of old. The journey was treacherous, with the forest seemingly alive, its twisting paths and gnarled trees conspiring to lead travelers astray. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of crimson and gold, Alex stumbled upon the village. It was eerily silent, the only sounds being the soft rustling of leaves and the distant howl of a lone wolf. The houses were dilapidated, their once vibrant colors faded and peeling, windows like empty eyes staring into the void. Compelled by an invisible force, Alex ventured deeper into the village on to the central square where a decrepit fountain stood. It was here that the air grew colder, the atmosphere thick with an unspoken dread. Shadows danced at the corner of Alex's vision, fleeting and elusive, yet filled with an ominous presence. In the heart of the square lay an ancient tome, its pages yellowed with age, bound in leather seemed to pulse with a life of its own. As Alex reached out, a chill wind whipped through the square, the pages fluttering open to reveal cryptic writings and unsettling sketches that depicted rituals and creatures of nightmare. The words on the pages seemed to whisper into the night, a language long forgotten yet understood by the darkness that lingered in the village. It was a tale of a pact, a bargain struck with entities beyond the realm of human understanding in exchange for prosperity and protection. But such deals come at a price. The prosperity was fleeting and the protection turned into a curse. The villagers vanished, leaving behind a void filled with their lingering regrets and an unquenchable thirst for the living. As the moon reached its zenith, casting an eerie glow over the village, the boundary between worlds thinned. Shadows took form, coalescing into figures of the lost villagers, their eyes hollow with despair, their mouths agape in silent screams. They converged upon the fountain, their movements disjointed, a macabre dance of the damned. Alex, heart pounding, realized the gravity of the situation. The village wasn't just abandoned, it was a prison, a holding cell for souls too tormented to find peace. The tome was the key, its pages a chronicle of the village's descent into darkness. But before Alex could act, the ground trembled, the air thickened a suffocating darkness enveloped the square. From the depths of the earth, a formless entity began to emerge, its presence an abyss that threatened to devour all light, all warmth. In a desperate bid for survival, Alex grabbed the tome and fled, the wails of the damned echoing through the forest chilling reminder of the village's tragic fate. The path out was fraught with peril, the forest now a labyrinth of horrors, each tree a specter, each shadow a predator. 
As dawn broke, Alex emerged from the forest, the tome still in hand. The horrors of the night etched into memory, but the story doesn't end here. The tome, a Pandora's box of ancient evils, was now in the hands of the living, a link to the forgotten village that refused to be severed. The tale remains unfinished, a chapter waiting to be written. As the line between our world and the one that lies just beyond the veil continues to blur, the village may be forgotten, but its curse lives on. A somber warning that some places are best left undiscovered. Their stories untold, their secrets buried in the shadows. And as for Alex, the quest for knowledge has become a burden, a relentless pursuit by the phantoms of the past, a reminder that some doors, once opened, can never be closed again. The night is filled with stories, but some are better left untold, for they are the ones that keep you up at night. Continuing from where we left off, Alex, with the ancient tome in hand, found temporary sanctuary in the dimly lit confines of an old, run-down motel at the edge of the forest. The weight of the night's horrors pressed heavily on Alex's mind, the echoes of the damned villagers' wails still ringing in the ears, a haunting melody that seemed to seep into the very walls of the room. As Alex delved into the tome's cryptic pages by the flickering light of a lone candle, the shadows in the corners of the room grew deeper, more pronounced. The air grew thick, charged with an unseen menace. The pages of the tome seemed to come alive, whispering dark secrets and forgotten truths that twisted the mind and soul. The story within the tome revealed a history mired in blood and darkness. Centuries ago, the village had been a haven for practitioners of the occult, seeking to harness the power of ancient entities through forbidden rituals. The village's prosperity was not by chance, but by design. A sinister pact with the shadows that lurked just beyond the veil of reality. As Alex pieced together the tale, the realization dawned that the entity they had glimpsed in the village was not just a remnant of its cursed past, but the very embodiment of the pact itself, a keeper of the bargain that demanded a terrible price. The shadows in the room seemed to listen, to lean closer, as if drawn to the tale of their own origins. The air in the room grew colder, the candle flame flickering erratically, casting grotesque shapes that seemed to move of their own accord. The line between the written word and the creeping reality began to blur. The horrors of the village, not just a tale from the past, but a living, breathing presence that sought to break free from the confines of the tome. In a moment of chilling clarity, Alex understood that the tome was not merely a record of the village's dark history, but a conduit, a bridge between worlds that had been unwittingly opened. The rituals detailed within its pages were not just for summoning, but for binding for keeping the ancient pact sealed and the entity contained. But the tome's presence in the world of the living had weakened the bonds, the shadows growing bolder, more tangible, with every word read aloud from its cursed pages. The walls of the motel room seemed to pulse with a life of their own, the darkness pressing in, eager to claim what was owed. Outside, the wind howled like the cries of the damned, 
A storm brewing with unnatural speed. The sky darkening with malevolent intent. The forest, a silent witness to the night's unfolding horrors, seemed to edge closer. Its twisted trees casting long, sinister shadows that reached towards the motel like the fingers of a giant, skeletal hand. Inside, the barrier between Alex and the encroaching darkness grew ever thinner. The candlelight now the only bulwark against the all-consuming black. The tome's whispers grew louder, more insistent. A cacophony of voices that demanded attention, that beckoned Alex deeper into the abyss. The story was far from over. The village's curse, not just a relic of the past, but a living, breathing entity that sought to reclaim its due. The ancient pact remained unfulfilled. The balance disturbed, and the shadows that lay beyond the veil of reality were restless, hungry for the light of the living. As the storm outside raged, the line between the storm's fury and the turmoil within the room blurred. The natural and supernatural merging into a tempest of chaos and fear. The motel, once a place of refuge, now seemed like a trap. The walls closing in, the shadows whispering promises of despair and madness. And in the heart of the storm, in the eye of the darkness, the tale of the forgotten village continued to unfold, its ending yet to be written, its horrors yet to be fully unleashed. The story remains hanging, a thread in the fabric of the night, a story to keep you up, wondering, waiting the darkness to claim what is its own. As the storm outside the motel reached its zenith, the lines between reality and the supernatural world within the tome blurred further. The whispers from the book grew into a cacophony, each word resonating with the energy of the ancient pact. The shadows in the room no longer merely danced. They pulsed with a life of their own out towards Alex with ethereal fingers, each touch colder than ice, each whisper a promise of nightmares made flesh. The storm outside seemed to echo the turmoil within, lightning flashing with unnatural frequency, each bolt illuminating the room in stark, ghostly light, revealing glimpses of the otherworldly horrors that lurked just beyond the veil. The winds howling merged with the screams of the damned, a symphony of despair that threatened to shatter the mind. In a moment of desperate clarity, Alex realized the motel was not a sanctuary, but a nexus, a point where worlds converged drawn together by the tome's malignant presence, the entity from the village, its formless essence, a malignage of shadows and despair, began to manifest more clearly. Its presence no longer confined to the whispers of the tome, but spilling into the room, a tide of darkness that sought to engulf everything. The entity's whispers became intelligible, a litany of promises and threats, each word a thread in the fabric of the ancient pact that bound it to the village. And now, inadvertently, to Alex, the tome was the key, and Alex's reading of it had turned the lock, opening a door that should have remained forever closed. As the entity's form coalesced, the room seemed to warp and twist, the boundaries of physical space losing meaning. The shadows cast by the lightning became doorways, 
glimpses into the forgotten village, each flash revealing scenes of the past, of rituals conducted in the dead of night, of sacrifices made in the name of forgotten gods. The air grew thick, almost liquid, each breath a struggle against the weight of the darkness that filled the room. The temperature dropped, breaths visible in the air, a physical manifestation of the fear that permeated the space. The very fabric of reality seemed to fray at the edges. The distinction between the motel room and the shadowy realm of the entity blurring until indistinguishable. In this maelstrom of supernatural forces, Alex fought to maintain a semblance of sanity. The realization dawning that the tome was not merely a historical record, but a part of the entity itself, a physical anchor that allowed it to reach through the veil. The entity spoke directly to Alex now, its voice a multitude, echoing from the shadows, from the pages of the tome, from the very walls of the room. It spoke of the pact, of the price of knowledge, of the balance that had been disturbed. It offered promises of power, of secrets unveiled, but at a cost so steep it was unthinkable. And yet, amidst the chaos, a sliver of hope remained. The tome, the source of the entity's power in this realm, also held the key to its undoing, buried within its pages, obscured by riddles and guarded by dark magics, lay the ritual to sever the connection, to banish the entity back to the shadows from whence it came. The storm outside raged on, a mirror to the battle within, a battle not just for Alex's life, but for the very soul. The path to salvation was fraught with peril. Each word of the ritual, a double-edged sword that could either banish the darkness or unleash it fully upon the world. As Alex prepared to speak the words that would either save or damn, the entity gathered its strength. The shadows coalescing into a form both terrifying and awe-inspiring. A being of darkness and despair, ancient and malevolent. A god of the forgotten and the damned. The story hangs in the balance, the outcome uncertain. The night filled with terrors yet to be faced and secrets yet to be uncovered. The line between light and darkness, sanity and madness has never been thinner. And the tale of the forgotten village, of Alex and the ancient tome, remains unfinished. A whispered promise of horrors yet to come. In the charged atmosphere of the motel room, with the entity now almost fully materialized, and the storm outside mirroring the intensity of the supernatural confrontation within, Alex's mind raced for a solution. The tome's cryptic instructions for the ritual were complex, interwoven with traps for the unwary. Each phrase, a potential catalyst for further horror, if mispronounced or misunderstood. The entity, sensing its impending banishment, or worse, its potential release into the world, intensified its assault. The room stretched and distorted, dimensions twisting in impossible ways, the walls pulsing like the beating heart of some gigantic beast. The shadows, no longer content to merely lurk, snapped and snarled like living things, their forms occasionally coalescing into nightmarish visages of villagers long consumed by the pack. Alex, with a trembling hand, began the ritual, the ancient words feeling alien 
on the tongue. Each syllable a palpable force that vibrated through the air. The entity, its form now a swirling vortex of darkness, roared in defiance. Its voice a cacophony of every soul it had consumed, a sound that threatened to tear the very fabric of reality. As the ritual progressed, the air in the room became electrified, static crackling over every surface, the hair on Alex's arms standing on end. The shadows cast by the lightning outside no longer showed the motel room, but scenes of other places, other times, each flash a glimpse into another realm, a world of endless night and unspeakable horror. The entity fought back with a fury born of centuries of imprisonment, its essence lashing out, seeking to corrupt the ritual, to invert its purpose from banishment to summoning. The motel room became a battleground, not of flesh and blood, but of wills, a clash between the ancient malice of the entity and the desperate determination of a single human soul. Outside, the storm reached its peak, the wind and rain a maelstrom that mirrored the chaos within, the boundary between the natural and supernatural grew ever thinner the storm itself becoming an extension of the entity's power, a physical manifestation of the battle being waged in the ethereal realm. Amidst this chaos, a new presence made itself known, a counterpoint to the darkness, a glimmer of light in the depths of the night. This new force, ethereal and elusive, seemed to be drawn by the ritual its nature and origins a mystery, its intentions unclear. Was it an ally summoned by the ritual, a guardian spirit of the tome, or another player in the game of cosmic powers far beyond human understanding? This presence brought with it a sense of calm, a momentary respite in the eye of the storm, both literal and metaphorical. Its light though faint, pierced the darkness, revealing the true extent of the entity's corruption, the twisted souls and broken dreams that fueled its power. The battle of wills intensified, the room now a nexus of conflicting forces, the air a tapestry of light and shadow, each struggling for dominance. The entity's roars became screams, the light's presence an anathema to its existence, a threat to the darkness it embodied. In this maelstrom, the lines between allies and enemies, between salvation and damnation, blurred. The ritual's conclusion neared, the final words a beacon in the darkness all to forces beyond comprehension. The outcome remained uncertain, the balance precarious. The story of the forgotten village, of Alex and the ancient entity hanging in the balance, a tale of darkness and light, of terror and hope yet to be concluded. In the climax of the ritual, as the final words hung in the air, palpable tension filled the room, a stillness that preluded the storm's fury. The entity, now a maelstrom of shadows and despair, thrashed against the invisible bonds the ritual had begun to weave, its form flickering between the ethereal and the grotesquely tangible. The mysterious light, its origins still unknown, grew in intensity its radiance a stark contrast to the encroaching darkness. It began to shape itself, forming a barrier between Alex and the entity, its glow pulsating in rhythm with the ritual's cadence. Each 
beat a heartbeat in the silent standoff. As the ritual neared its apex, the motel room transformed into a surreal battlefield. The laws of physics bending under the weight of the colliding forces. The walls, once solid and immovable, rippled like the surface of a disturbed pond. The shadows cast by the storm outside, deepening into portals to nightmares. Each flash of lightning, illuminating scenes of unspeakable horror. The entity, in its desperation, unleashed a final, devastating assault. A wave of darkness that sought not just to overwhelm Alex, but to erase the very essence of light from the room. This wave, a physical manifestation of despair and oblivion, collided with the barrier of light. The impact resonating like the clash of titans, a sound that transcended the audible and ventured into the realm of the soul. In this moment of impact, reality itself seemed to fracture, the veil between worlds tearing, revealing glimpses of the entity's domain, a realm of eternal night where twisted spires rose like the bones of forgotten gods, and the sky bled with the light of dying stars. Amidst this chaos, the entity's voice, now a chorus of the damned, filled the room its words a litany of curses and promises of retribution. It spoke of worlds it had consumed, of civilizations it had brought to ruin. Its voice a promise that, even if banished, its shadow would linger, a blight upon the land. The light, now a beacon in the darkness, fought back with a silent fury, its brilliance intensifying with each word of the ritual, each syllable a strike against the darkness. Within this light, shapes began to form, ethereal figures that stood in defiance of the entity, guardians summoned by the ritual, or perhaps manifestations of the tomes hidden power. As the final words of the ritual were spoken, a silence fell, a pause in the cosmic struggle, the outcome hanging in the balance, the room, the storm outside, even time itself seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the scales to tip. In this suspended moment, the story remains, a tale of darkness and light of ancient packs and modern courage, the fate of Alex, the entity, and the mysterious light hangs in the balance, their story a thread in the tapestry of the night, a narrative of terror and wonder, unfinished, its conclusion waiting to be written in the shadows that linger just beyond the edge of sight. As the silence stretched, an unbearable tension filled the room. The very air charged with the potential for both salvation and cataclysm. The barrier of light, now shimmering with a multitude of colors, seemed to pulse with the energy of the ritual. A living thing that stood as the last bastion against the darkness. The entity its form now unstable, fluctuated between the corporeal and the utterly alien, a being of nightmare that defied comprehension. Its screams, once a cacophony of despair, had become erratic, punctuated by moments of eerie silence, as if it too was uncertain of its fate. In this liminal space, the figures within the light on more distinct forms, their features ethereal yet familiar, 
echoes of the souls the entity had consumed over the centuries. They stood in silent judgment, their gaze fixed upon the entity, a testament to its countless sins. The storm outside had reached a crescendo, the lightning now constant. Each bolt, a photographer's flash, that captured the surreal tableau within the room. The thunder was no longer just a sound, but a physical force. Each peal shaking the foundations of the motel. A drumbeat to the unfolding drama. Within this maddened choir, the tome lay open, its pages fluttering as if caught in a gale. The ancient script glowing with an otherworldly light. The words seemed to move, to rearrange themselves. A living script that narrated the ongoing struggle. A story writing itself in real time. Alex caught in the eye of this supernatural storm. Felt an overwhelming sense of displacement. As if standing at the confluence of multiple realities. Each layer of existence translucent. The scenes within bleeding into one another. The motel room, the forgotten village, the entity's nightmarish domain, all coexisted in a kaleidoscopic swirl of imagery and emotion. As the ritual reached its inevitable conclusion, a new element introduced itself into the maelstrom, a variable that tipped the precarious balance. From the depths of the tome, a new voice emerged, neither human nor entirely alien, a whisper that seemed to emanate from the very pages of the book. This voice, ancient and wise, spoke of a third path, a solution that neither banished the entity nor allowed it to reign free, but instead sought to bind it harness its power for a purpose yet unveiled. This revelation introduced a complexity to the ritual that Alex had not anticipated, a choice that bore the weight of consequence. To bind the entity was to assume responsibility for its power, to become a guardian at the threshold between light and darkness, a role that came with its own perils and promises. The entity, sensing this shift, redoubled its efforts, its form coalescing into a singular point of darkness, a black hole from which no light, no hope could escape. It became a singularity of despair, pulling at the fabric of reality, seeking to undo the ritual's work break free from the constraints that bound it. The figures within the light, now clearly the spirits of those the entity had consumed, joined their essence with the ritual, their collective will, a beacon that pushed back against the darkness, their faces, each a story of loss and redemption, became clearer, their resolve strengthening Alex's own the room, the storm, the very air vibrated with the climax of this cosmic struggle. The outcome balanced on a knife edge, a story of epic proportions unfolding in the heart of an ordinary motel room. The boundaries between worlds blurred further, the veil a mere gossamer that fluttered in the breath of gods, the fate of all hanging in the balance, a tale of terror an awe of darkness and light, suspended in a moment outside of time, awaiting the next chapter in a saga without end. In the heart of this suspended moment, the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and weave, the laws of nature bending to the will of the forces at play, the singularity of darkness that the entity had become was now a vortex its pull strong enough to distort the space around it, drawing in the flickering light and the ethereal figures. 
a battle of attrition between the consuming abyss and the defiant luminescence. The ancient voice from the tome, now a guiding force in the chaos, spoke of a sealing ritual, a complex and dangerous gambit that could bind the entity, but at great risk. This ritual required a harmony between the light and the darkness, a balance that was anathema to the entity's very nature. As Alex began to chant the sealing incantation, the motel room transformed further, the walls dissolving into vistas of other times and places, a mosaic of realities that flickered in and out of existence. Each vision was a window into a potential outcome, a myriad of what-ifs that tantalized and terrified. The entity, aware of its impending imprisonment, unleashed a final, desperate attack. A surge of darkness that was a palpable wave of fear and despair. This wave, infused with the essence of the entity, sought not just to overwhelm the light, but to extinguish it, to erase the very possibility of hope. In response, the figures within the light solidified their presence forms becoming more corporeal. A legion of the lost who stood in defiance of the darkness, their collective will, their unresolved stories, lent strength to the barrier. Their light, now a blazing torrent that clashed with the entity's darkness in a cataclysmic confrontation. The air crackled with the energy of this confrontation room no longer a physical space, but a battleground for forces beyond comprehension. The storm outside mirrored this battle. The lightning and thunder no longer mere weather, but an echo of the cosmic struggle, a symphony of chaos and order. Within this maelstrom, the tome itself became a conduit, its pages a bridge between the realms ancient script glowing with an ethereal fire. The words of the sealing incantation resonated with the power of ages, a binding spell that sought to weave the entity's essence into the fabric of the tome, to turn its power against it. As the ritual reached its zenith, a blinding light filled the room, a purity was the antithesis of the entity's abyssal darkness. This light, though, was not just illumination, but a force, a tangible presence that sought to envelop the entity, to bind it within an inescapable prison of radiance. The entity, its form now unstable, fluctuated violently. It screams a cacophony that shattered the boundary between sound and silence. A desperate plea from a being that faced an eternity of imprisonment. The shadows it cast, once menacing and pervasive, now recoiled from the light, retreating into the dwindling darkness. In this climax, where light and darkness collided with the fate of worlds hanging in the balance, the outcome remained uncertain, the struggle unresolved. The story of Alex, the entity, and the mysterious forces at play continued to unfold, a narrative suspended in a moment of cosmic significance, a tale of horror and heroism that lingered on the edge of reality, its conclusion waiting in the shadows of the unknown, ready to be continued. In the critical juncture of the ritual, with the new path unveiled by the ancient voice from the tome, Alex faced the monumental decision of binding the entity. The room, already a nexus of colliding realities, seemed to contract. The air thick with the power of unmade choices, each breath heavy with the weight 
of impending consequences. The entity, now a vortex of pure darkness, pulsed at the room's center, its essence straining against the ethereal chains, the ritual and the spirits within the light sought to impose. The darkness throbbed with malevolence, a heart of shadow beating in rhythm with the storm's fury outside. Each pulse, a wave of dread that threatened to wash away the fragile barriers holding it at bay. The spirits of the consumed, their forms more defined within the radiant barrier, began to chant in an ancient tongue, their voices harmonizing with the ritual's cadence, weaving a complex tapestry of sound and light that sought to encircle and bind the entity, their faces etched with the sorrow of ages, now bore expressions of determined resolve, their eyes alight with the fire of retribution. As the ritual's power crescendoed, the motel room itself began to disintegrate. The physical boundaries dissolving into the miasma of the storm outside, the interior and the exterior merging into a single vast arena for the final confrontation. The lightning, relentless in its assault, now struck precise intention. Each bolt, a spear of light cast by the storm, targeting the dark heart of the entity. In this maelstrom, the tome, the source of knowledge and catalyst for the unfolding chaos, floated untouched. Its pages spread wide, the ancient script glowing with a fierce luminescence voice from the tome, a guiding presence amidst the turmoil, intoned the final phrases of the binding ritual, its tone imbued with the authority of eons, commanding the forces at play to converge and seal the entity's fate. The entity, sensing the imminence of its binding, unleashed a final desperate assault, a torrent of darkness that sought not just to break free, but to annihilate, to erase the very possibility of its containment. This wave of obliteration, blacker than the deepest night, collided with the barrier of light, a cataclysmic meeting of antithetical forces, the impact a silent scream resonated through every layer of reality. Within this chaos, a figure emerged from the tome's light, a manifestation of the ancient voice, its form both alien and majestic, a being of light and knowledge, its presence a counterbalance to the entity's darkness. This guardian of the tome its purpose bound to the ritual's completion, joined its power with Alex and the spirits, a trinity of light against the darkness. The battle reached a fever pitch. The forces of light and dark intertwined in a dance of destruction and creation. The outcome, a swirling vortex of potential, each moment birthing infinite possibilities each action rewriting the fabric of reality. The storm outside, no longer a mere meteorological phenomenon, mirrored the cosmic struggle. It's every thunderclap, a testament to the clash of titans within the motel's crumbling walls. In this suspended reality, where time and space lost all meaning, the story of Alex the entity and the ancient guardian from the tome unfolded, a narrative woven from the threads of fear and courage, darkness and light. The end of this chapter, like those before it, 
remains etched in the shadows that linger at the edge of our perception. A tale of terror and wonder that refuses conclusion. Its resolution hanging in the balance. A whispered promise of nightmares and dreams yet to be explored. As the cosmic struggle between the forces of light and darkness escalated within the disintegrating confines of the motel room, the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and buckle under the strain. The guardian from the tome, a being of pure radiance and ancient wisdom, extended its influence, weaving intricate patterns of light that intertwined with the chants of the spirits, creating a lattice of energy aimed at containing the entity. The entity, a maw of unfathomable darkness, fought against its impending binding with a ferocity born of eons spent in the void. It lashed out, tendrils of shadow striking at the barriers of light, each contact sending ripples through the air, distorting the very essence of being. In this realm of chaos, where the storm outside mirrored the tumult within, Alex stood at the epicenter, the eye of the storm, holding the tome, now a beacon of otherworldly light. Alex became a conduit for the ritual, the lines between the self and the other, the human and the divine, blurring in the intensity of the moment. The motel, barely recognizable now, its walls and boundaries dissolved, became a surreal landscape, a battleground for forces that defied comprehension. The storm's lightning, relentless in its fury, etched stark shadows into this landscape creating fleeting glimpses of other places, other times, each flash a window into realms beyond. As the binding ritual reached its zenith, a profound silence enveloped the scene, a momentary pause in the cosmic dance that seemed to stretch into eternity. In this silence, the entity's roar was a soundless void black hole of despair that sought to swallow all hope, all light. But in this moment of supreme tension, a new force made itself known, a counterpoint to the entity's darkness. From within Alex, from within the tome, from within the very light that fought to contain the darkness, a spark ignited, a seed of power that had lain dormant waiting for this precise moment of alignment. This spark, neither fully of the light nor the darkness, bore the essence of balance, a harmony of opposing forces that promised a new path, a new solution to the ancient conflict. It manifested as a radiant orb, pulsing with potential, its heart a kaleidoscope of colors that defied description. The entity, sensing this new threat to its existence, recoiled, its form shuddering, the shadows that comprised its being swirling in turmoil. The guardian of the tome, recognizing the significance of this emergence, redoubled its efforts, its light converging on the orb nurturing its growth, guiding its power. The spirits, their chants now a symphony of hope, encircled the scene, their forms luminous, their presence lending strength to the burgeoning force at the center of the storm. The motel room, the storm, the very battle itself seemed to converge on this point of light, this nexus of potential that held the promise of resolution and rebirth. As the orb grew, it 
its light began to penetrate the entity's darkness. Tendrils of radiance piercing the shadows, weaving through the entity's form in a dance of creation and destruction. The entity's roars became screams, the sound of a darkness being undone, being rewritten by the light. In this climax, where the outcome hung in the balance, the story of Alex, the entity, the guardian, and the spirits remained poised on the brink of revelation. A tale of darkness confronted by light, of ancient packs challenged by new hope. The narrative, rich with the potential for endings and new beginnings, remains suspended. A whispered invitation to explore the depths of the night, to confront the shadows with the light within, a story yet to be concluded, its final chapters waiting in the silence that follows the storm. As the cosmic struggle between the forces of light and darkness escalated within the disintegrating confines of the motel room, the very fabric of reality seemed to warp and buckle under the strain, the guardian from the tome, a being of pure radiance and ancient wisdom, extended its influence, weaving intricate patterns of light that intertwined with the chants of the spirits, creating a lattice of energy aimed at containing the entity. The entity, a maw of unfathomable darkness, fought against its impending binding with a ferocity born of eons spent in the void. It lashed out, tendrils of shadow striking at the barriers of light, each contact sending ripples through the air, distorting the very essence of being. In this realm of chaos, where the storm outside mirrored the tumult within, Alex stood at the epicenter, the eye of the storm, holding the tome, now a beacon of otherworldly light. Alex became a conduit for the ritual, the lines between the self and the other, the human and the divine, blurring in the intensity of the moment. The motel, barely recognizable now, its walls and boundaries dissolved, became a surreal landscape a battleground for forces that defied comprehension. The storm's lightning, relentless in its fury, etched stark shadows into this landscape, creating fleeting glimpses of other places, other times, each flash a window into realms beyond. As the binding ritual reached its zenith, a profound silence enveloped the scene a momentary pause in the cosmic dance that seemed to stretch into eternity. In this silence, the entity's roar was a soundless void, a black hole of despair that sought to swallow all hope, all light. But in this moment of supreme tension, a new force made itself known, a counterpoint to the entity's darkness from within Alex from within the tome, from within the very light that fought to contain the darkness, a spark ignited, a seed of power that had lain dormant, waiting for this precise moment of alignment. This spark, neither fully of the light nor the darkness, bore the essence of balance, a harmony of opposing forces that promised a new path a new solution to the ancient conflict. It manifested as a radiant orb, pulsing with potential. Its heart, a kaleidoscope of colors that defied description. The entity, sensing this new threat to its existence, recoiled, its form shuddering, the shadows that comprised its being swirling in turmoil. The guardian of the tome, recognized 
recognizing the significance of this emergence, redoubled its efforts, its light converging on the orb, nurturing its growth, guiding its power. The spirits, their chants, now a symphony of hope, encircled the scene, their forms luminous, their presence lending strength to the burgeoning force at the center of the storm, the motel room, the storm, the very battle itself seemed to converge on this point of light, this nexus of potential that held the promise of resolution and rebirth. As the orb grew, its light began to penetrate the entity's darkness. Tendrils of radiance piercing the shadows, weaving through the entity's form in a dance of creation and destruction. The entity's roars became screams, the sound of a darkness being undone, being rewritten by the light. In this climax, where the outcome hung in the balance, the story of Alex, the entity, the guardian, and the spirits remained poised on the brink of revelation. A tale of darkness confronted by light, of ancient packs challenged by new hope. The narrative, rich with the potential for endings and new beginnings, remains suspended. A whispered invitation to explore the depths of the night, to confront the shadows with the light within, a story yet to be concluded, its final chapters waiting in the silence that follows the storm. As the radiant orb expanded, its light weaving through the darkness, a profound transformation unfolded. The entity, once a vortex of despair and shadows, began to lose its menacing form. The tendrils of radiance unraveling the very fabric of its being darkness did not simply vanish. It was absorbed, transmuted by the orb's light into something new, something pure. The guardian, its form shimmering with a thousand lights, nodded in silent acknowledgement of the unfolding miracle. It had guided the ritual, but this new force, this orb of balanced light, was beyond its ancient wisdom. It was a creation born of the moment, a fusion of all the energies present, a testament to the possibility of harmony between light and darkness. The spirits, their ethereal forms aglow with the light of redemption, began to fade, their purpose fulfilled. They had been avenged, their essence freed from the entity's grasp, as they dissipated, their expressions were those of peace, a final release from the torment that had bound them to the earthly realm. In the heart of the storm, within the remnants of the motel room, Alex stood in awe, the tome still in hand, its pages now blank, the ancient script and dark tales at once held erased by the events of the night. The guardian approached, its form becoming more ethereal, preparing to depart now that its duty was complete. You have brought balance where there was none, light where darkness reigned, the guardian spoke, its voice a melody of a thousand whispers. This was not the ending foretold, but perhaps it is the one that was needed. A final flash of lightning, illuminating the dawn's first light breaking through the storm clouds. The guardian vanished, leaving behind a world forever changed. The entity, now a part of the orb's radiance, had become a beacon in the night, a symbol of hope and balance. Alex, alone in the clearing where the motel once stood, looked at the orb, now gently floating before them, it 
pulsed with a soft light, the heartbeat of the new harmony between realms. The storm had passed, the skies clearing to reveal a canvas of blues and golds, a new day dawning, the tale of the forgotten village, the entity, and the night of the storm would live on, not as a legend of terror, but as a story of transformation and redemption. The orb, a lingering presence, served as a reminder that even in the darkest of nights, there is the potential for light, for change. And so, the story finds its conclusion, not in an ending, but in a beginning. The promise of a new chapter, written not in the pages of a tome, but in the hearts of those who dare to confront the darkness, to seek the light within and around. Alex, a witness and architect of this transformation, stepped forward into the new day, the orb by their side, a guiding light for whatever path lay ahead. As the radiant orb expanded, its light weaving through the darkness, a profound transformation unfolded. The entity, once a vortex of despair and shadows, began to lose its menacing form. The tendrils of radiance unraveling the very fabric of its being. The darkness did not simply vanish. It was absorbed, transmuted by the orb's light into something new, something pure. The guardian, its form shimmering a thousand lights, nodded in silent acknowledgement of the unfolding miracle. It had guided the ritual, but this new force, this orb of balanced light, was beyond its ancient wisdom. It was a creation born of the moment, a fusion of all the energies present, a testament to the possibility of harmony between light and darkness. The spirits, their ethereal forms aglow with the light of redemption, began to fade, their purpose fulfilled. They had been avenged, their essence freed from the entity's grasp. As they dissipated, their expressions were those of peace, a final release from the torment that had bound them to the earthly realm. In the heart of the storm, within the remnants of the motel room, Alex stood in awe, the tome still in hand, its pages now blank, the ancient script and dark tales it once held erased by the events of the night. The guardian approached, its form becoming more ethereal, preparing to depart now that its duty was complete. You have brought balance where there was none, light where darkness reigned, the guardian spoke its voice a melody of a thousand whispers. This was not the ending foretold, but perhaps it is the one that was needed. With a final flash of lightning, illuminating the dawn's first light breaking through the storm clouds, the guardian vanished, leaving behind a world forever changed. The entity now a part of the orb's radiance, had become a beacon in the night, a symbol of hope and balance. Alex, alone in the clearing where the motel once stood, looked at the orb, now gently floating before them. It pulsed with a soft light, a heartbeat of the new harmony between realms. The storm had passed, the skies clearing to reveal a canvas of blues and golds, a new day dawning, the tale of the forgotten village, the entity, and the night of the storm would live on, not as a legend of terror, but as a story of transformation and redemption. The orb, a lingering presence, served as a reminder that even in the darkest of nights, there is the potential for light, for change. And so, 
the story finds its conclusion not in an ending, but in a beginning. The promise of a new chapter, written not in the pages of a tome, but in the hearts of those who dare to confront the darkness, to seek the light within and around. Alex, a witness and architect of this transformation, stepped forward into the new day, the orb by their side, a guiding light for whatever path lay ahead.